Hello, I'm Chris Tarrant and this is Tarrant's Quiz Time. It took weeks, meetings, seminars to get that title. It's not who wants to be a millionaire. I'm afraid you won't win a million quid, but hopefully you'll have a lot of fun. Get your pens and your papers ready because it's going to be an epic quiz. All proceeds from this and I would like you to donate three pounds. It can be less, it can be more. I'd like donations large or small, large or small, but we, we're suggesting three quid just to, to play along with it. All proceeds from this go to Crohn's and Colitis UK, which is one of my favorite charities. I'm very impressed with the people who work with this particular charity because one of my own daughters was diagnosed with this very difficult, embarrassing, painful condition when she was expecting her first child. And it really was quite nightmarish for us as a family. She was in and out of the hospital. Um, she had sepsis six or seven times. We thought we were going to lose her. But thanks very much to this charity. And also, I do have to say thanks to the nurses and doctors and also the amazing surgeon who operated on her. She has now come through the other side. She's still got Crohn's, but she's managing it. She lives with it. And she seems to be pretty fine. She's got a beautiful little boy with long curly hair and she's talking about a second family. So, but it's been a great result. And thanks to the charity who I hope you're going to donate to tonight. And I hope you enjoy the quiz. People with Crohn's learn to be very strong, very determined. They can live with this condition. So three quid please, if possible. Lots of rounds, music rounds, treasure trove, general knowledge, geography, the lot. Be interested to see how you do. So let's play. Who wants to? Oh, sorry. Wrong one. Let's play Terence Quiz Time. Okay, here we go. Round one is general knowledge. So, question number one. What is the highest chess score achieved on record by a human? 1,580, 2,904, 2,882 or D3,000? 1,580, 2,904, 2,882 or 3,000? Okay, question number two. Which bird is the only one in the world that can fly backwards? A, the Quetzal. B, the green Akari. C, the hummingbird. Or D, the parakeet. A, the Quetzal. B, the green Akari. C, the hummingbird. Or D, the parakeet. Question number three. The 90s film, Clueless, is based on which Jane Austen novel? A. Persuasion B. Emma C. Sense and Sensibility or D. Love and Friendship Jane Austen novel I did Jane Austen at university I was so bored Sorry, I digress Question number four How many different colours can the human eye distinguish? A. Three primary colours B, 10,000 colours, C, 1 million, or D, 10 million. How many different colours can the human eye distinguish? A, three primary colours, B, 10,000, C, 1 million, or D, 10 million. Question number five. What would you find on any Euro note? A, people. B, wildlife, C, bridges, or D, castles? Okay, first five questions. How are you doing? Really badly. What would you find on any Euro note? Question number six, uh, star signs. What star sign is represented by the scales? A, Libra, B, Virgo, C, Sagittarius, or D, Pisces, the star sign represented by the scales. Question number six. A, Libra, B, Virgo, C, Sagittarius, or D, Pisces? 
Which is the oldest tech company? Question number seven. Which is the oldest tech company? A, Uber. B, PayPal. C, Google. Or D, Amazon. The oldest tech company. A, Uber. B, PayPal. C, Google. Or D, Amazon. Question number eight. Who was Henry VIII's fifth wife? A, Anne of Cleves. B, Catherine Howard. C, Anne Elliot. Or D, Catherine of Aragon. Henry VIII's fifth wife. Was it A, Anne of Cleves? B, Catherine Howard. C, Anne Elliot. Or D, Catherine of Aragon. Question number nine, this is a general knowledge round with 10 questions. Number nine is this. Who was the last prisoner or prisoners in the Tower of London? A, Rudolf Hess. B, Reggie and Ronnie Cray. C, Charles I. Or D, Michael Fagan, who was the man who broke into the Queen's bedroom and sat on the end of a bed. Who was the last prisoner or prisoners in the Tower of London? Number 10. What was the most popular song of the catchily named 2010s? A. Get Lucky, Daft Punk and Pharrell Williams. B. Happy, Pharrell Williams. C. Got a Feeling, Black Eyed Peas. Or D. Rolling in the Deep by Adele. The most popular song of the 2010s. Get Lucky. A. Happy. B. Got a feeling. C. Or rolling in the deep. D. Okay. Well done, everybody. Probably. Let's, um, let's see how you did. These are the answers. I asked you question number one. What was the highest chess score achieved on record by human? Um, the answer is C. 2882. Question number two. Uh, which bird is the only bird in the world that can fly backwards? Uh, A was the Quetzal. B, the green Akari. C, the hummingbird. Or D, the parakeet. And the right answer is the hummingbird. And I've seen them do this. They sort of, they hover like that. And then they go forward. And then they'll hang around. And then they actually go backwards. I forget. I think in Africa somewhere. Quite impressive. Completely useless. But the hummingbird can fly backwards. Um, question number three. The 90s film Clueless is based on which Jane Austen novel? The right answer is B, Emma. Answer number four. How many different colours can the human eye distinguish? Three primary colours, 10,000, 1 million or 10 million? The answer is actually 10 million. 10 million different colours. Um, and yellow apparently is the most eye-catching colour, which is why I've chosen blue today. Uh, number five, if I asked you what would you find on any Euro note, the right answer is C. There'll always be a bridge or bridges on any Euro note. Number six, what star sign is represented by the scales? Libra, Virgo, Sagittarius or Pisces. It's actually Libra, which is my star sign. It's the sign of balance and sensitivity. And anybody less balanced or <laughs> less sensitive than me, you'll never find in your life. Um, number seven, which is the oldest of the tech companies, Uber, PayPal, Google or Amazon? It's D, Amazon. It was actually founded in 1994. Uh, PayPal and Google, uh, 98 and Uber in 2009. Um, Question number eight, Henry VIII's fifth wife, uh, Anne of Cleves, the Flanders mayor, Catherine Howard, Anne Elliot, or Catherine of Aragon. Uh, the answer is actually Catherine Howard, who was beheaded, as you do, most well, certainly Henry did. Um, Anne Elliot is actually a character in one of Jane Austen's novels, so she's not a wife of Henry VIII, one of the very few women in Britain who weren't married to Henry. Um, Number nine, I love this question. The last prisoner or prisoners in the Tower of London, Rudolf Hess, 
uh, Reggie and Ronnie Cray, Charles the First, or Michael Fagin, who somehow broke into Buckingham Palace and was able to sit on the end of the Queen's bed. <laughs> Where was all that security? All those blokes up the front and whatever. Those high walls. He actually sat on the end of the Queen's bed. He said, oh, please go away. Apparently he was quite harmless. Luckily, but he might not have been. The right answer is Reggie and Ronnie Cray, uh, who spent a time in the tower before they were moved to various high security prisons around the UK. Number 10, last one of round one, the general knowledge round. Uh, the most popular song of the 2010s. Uh, we gave you Get Lucky, Happy by Pharrell Williams, uh, Got a Feeling by Black Eyed Peas or Rolling in the Deep by Adele. And the right answer is um, B, Happy, Pharrell Williams. So 10 questions there. How many have you got? 10 out of 10. Yes. Well done, everybody. Okay. On to round two. Now, this is good. Round one was fine in this way, but this is even better. Round two, guess the movie. Now, each question will have images. They'll flash up on your screen um, for about 10 seconds. There will be various images. There's a movie in each one. OK, here they come. This is movie number one. Okay, there's a movie in there somewhere. Movie number two. Movie number three. I love this one. Movie number four. Just one image here, movie number five. Good luck with this one, movie number six. Okay, how you doing? Movie number seven. Ten in all, this is movie number seven. Good luck with this. Movie number eight. Okay, just two more this round. Movie number nine. Here are the images. Okay, your last one. This is movie number 10. Here they come. I love this round. It's a good one to set. I'm not sure about getting the answers. Number one, uh, box of chocolates, um, a feather, Bubba Gump's Red Cat. Bit of a clue. And the answer, of course, is the great Tom Hanks film, Forrest Gump. Uh, movie number two, The Alarm Clock and a news crew. And the answer is Groundhog Day. Number three, phone. 
and home. Uh, and that's the splendid Spielberg's E.T. Phone and home, E.T. Number four, a uh, little Chianti, fava beans and liver. Silence of the Lambs. Um, number five, just one image, a yellow cab, which was Robert De Niro, taxi driver. Number six, there was a period of my life when this was on my television screen for about two years. It was one of my little ones. Um, the clues were Olaf's carrot nose and ice. And the movie was Mummy and Daddy's favorite, Frozen. Number seven, uh, red pill and blue pill. Red pill and blue pill. Answer is the matrix. Number eight, uh, and if you didn't get sled, but you did get rosebud, you would know it was Citizen Kane, Orson Welles. Number nine, ghosts, bit of a clue, ghosts and marshmallows. Ghosts and marshmallows were the images. Number nine, the answer is Ghostbusters. And number 10, beers, McDonald's and Lovin, super bad, number 10. So Forrest Gump, Groundhog Day, E.T., Silence of the Lambs, Taxi Driver, Frozen, The Matrix, Citizen Kane, Ghostbusters and super bad. And I wonder how many of you got 10 out of 10. Okay, round three, we're calling it Treasure Hunt, a chance for you to go scampering around your homes. I'm going to read out a series of clues. Now, when the clues have been read out, you'll have five minutes on the timer. Go and find that item in your home. Then take the first letter from each item and arrange them into a word. Okay, nice and easy. Okay, this will be fun, actually. Here we go. Number one. These are the clues. You scamper off and find them. So, number one, fountain, bick or quill. Number two, keep the rain off, Auntie Ella. Keep the rain off, Auntie Ella. Number three, perfect for puddings, cereal or soup. Number four, the most difficult rhyming fruit. The most difficult rhyming fruit. Uh, number five, there are eight of these in all. Number five, how to finish preparing a salad or a big night out. Number six, more tea, Vicar. Number seven, goes with the curry, chili or weddings. Number eight, last one. This is your wake up call. Number eight, this is your wake up.
Okay, so you've been running around your house, all sweaty and horrible, most of you. So these are the answers. Each one will give you a word. I want the first letter of each word and rearrange them into another full word. So number one, fountain, bick or quill, fairly obviously pen. So we want the P for pen, the first letter of each word, of each answer. Question number two, keep the rain off Auntie Ella. So hopefully you went racing off to find an umbrella, which begins with U. So we've got a P and we've got a U. Uh, number three, perfect for puddings, cereal or soup is a bowl. Perfect for pudding, cereal or soup, B for bowl. Um, the most difficult rhyming fruit. Um, this is the word orange, with which there is nothing. We tried things like orange and dorange. Nothing rhymes with orange, so that's an O. Um, number five, how to finish preparing a salad or a big night out. How to finish preparing a salad or a big night out. Uh, we were looking for dress, as in dressing a salad or dressing for a big night out. We want the D, first letter of that. Uh, number six, more tea, Vicar. Um, Fairly obviously a cup. Cup of tea for the vicar. That's a C. Uh, goes with a curry, chili, or weddings. Good clue. Um, so it's rice, as in throwing a rice, like confetti, you throw rice all over the lucky, lucky bride and groom, or goes with a curry, goes with chili, or weddings. So that would be an R, the first letter of rice. And the last one, pretty obvious. This is your wake up call, a alarm clock. So you should have P-U-B-O-D-C-R-A, pub odkra, and you rearrange that and you should have got the right answer, the word cupboard. So if you got that, well done. Don't forget all proceeds from this, Terence Quiz Time, go to Chrome's and Colitis UK. We would like three pounds from everybody who takes part, but whatever you can afford, any donation, large or small, is very welcome for a great charity. Okay, we'll take a break and we'll see you back in about five minutes.
Hello, welcome back. Where have you been? What did you do? Um, you're halfway through Terence Quiz Time. All proceeds from this go to Crohn's and Colitis UK, which is a great charity. Uh, three more rounds to go. Um, we're testing your geographical knowledge. We're testing your musical knowledge and also a final round of true or false. Right, let's get started. Uh, this is round number four, geography. Number one, what is the biggest island in the world? Is it A, Greenland, B, Australia, C, Hawaii, or D, Jersey? The biggest island in the world. Is it A, Greenland, B, Australia, C, Hawaii, or D, Jersey? What is the world's longest railway journey? Is it A, the Californian Zephyr, which goes from San Francisco right the way up to Chicago? Uh, B, the Trans-Siberian Express from Moscow to Vladivostok? I will tell you that I was supposed to be in March and April filming on the Trans-Siberian Express and we were going from Moscow through um, through Mongolia and instead of going on the Vladivostok arm we were ending our uh, journey in Beijing three weeks in March and April this year we were going from Moscow to Mongolia to Beijing and mercifully for very obvious reasons that was cancelled um, C the GAN pronounced GAN from Darwin to Adelaide in Australia, or Adelaide back to Darwin. Or D, the Canadian, from Toronto to Vancouver, which I've also done filming, and that's one of the most beautiful journeys you will ever, ever make across the Rockies. Number three, what is the farthest point from the Earth's core? Think about that. The farthest point from the Earth's core. Mount Chimborazo, Chimborazo. I'm bluffing, I've no idea. Mount Chimborazo, A-Z-O. B, Mount Everest. C, the Mariana Trench. Or D, Ben Nevis. The farthest point from the Earth's core. A, Mount Chimborazo. B, Mount Everest. C, the Mariana Trench. Or D, Ben Nevis. Number four, which European country has the most borders? A, Hungary, B, Poland, C, Germany, or D, Estonia? European country with the most borders. A, Hungary, Poland, Germany, or Estonia? How long is the M1 in kilometers? A, 311, B, 25.59, C, 94.95, or D, 262 kilometers, the length of the M1. Number six, what is the smallest sovereign state in the world? A, the Maldives, B, Monaco, C, Federated States of Micronesia, or D, the Vatican, Vatican City. Maldives, A, Monaco, B, Federated States of Micronesia, C, or the Vatican, D, the smallest sovereign state in the world. Number seven, where is the Eiffel Tower in Paris? A, the left bank of the Seine, B, the right bank of the Seine, C, the north bank of the Seine, or D, the south bank of the Seine. Eiffel Tower in Paris, is it on the left bank, the right bank, C, the north bank, or D, the south bank? Number eight of ten in this geography round. What did the African country of Rhodesia become after independence? A, Botswana, beautiful country with lovely people. B, Lesotho, C, Zimbabwe, or D, Zambia? Rhodesia, but after independence, it was one of those. A, Botswana. B, Lesotho. C, Zimbabwe. 
or D, Zambia? Two more. What is the world's most active volcano? A, Kilauea in Hawaii. B, Ojos de Salado. I think I've done that justice, or possibly not, in Argentina. C, Mount Etna in Sicily. Or D, Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines. Kilauea in Hawaii. Ojos de Salado in Argentina. Uh, C, Mount Etna in Sicily. Or D, Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines. One more. Which country has won the most Olympic bronze medals? The most Olympic bronze medals. A, Great Britain. B, Soviet Union. C, China. Or D, the USA. The country that's won the most Olympic bronze medals. A, Great Britain. B, Soviet Union. C, China. Or D, USA. Okay, well done, everybody. Possibly, probably, uh, they weren't too tricky, one or two were a bit, a bit strange. Um, see how you did. These are the answers. I asked you, what's the biggest island in the world? The answer is A, Greenland. And if you put Australia, um, Australia is actually a continent. So it can't qualify as an island. Australia is a continent. Greenland is the biggest island. Um, number two, the world's longest railway journey. It is the Trans-Siberian Express from Moscow to Vladivostok. And then another arm would have gone with us and a film crew. Luckily, we didn't. Uh, through Mongolia on down to Beijing in China. Um, number three. The farthest point from the Earth's core. I must say, this made me scratch my head. Because um, you have to think about the Earth's core and the farthest point, how that would work. Mount Chimborazo. Mount Everest, Mariana Trench, or Ben Nevis? The right answer is actually Mount Chimborazo in Ecuador. I've seen this, it's a huge mountain, beautiful part of the world. But it's the point, because it's on the equator, it's the point where the Earth, the planet, actually bulges out. So that's as far, this is making sense to you, it's as far as you can possibly be away from the Earth's core. Okay. Uh, number four. Which European country has the most borders? It's actually Germany. Germany has nine borders with other European countries. So question number five, the length of the M1, the right answer is A, 311 kilometers. The right answer is A, 311 kilometers. Number six, um, the smallest sovereign state in the world, uh, and one of the richest, uh, is D, the Vatican City. It's not the Maldives, not Monaco, not Micronesia. Um, the Vatican has an area of 49 hectares and a population of around 825 people. But of course, is the Pope. So, number seven, the Eiffel Tower in Paris is on the left bank. Uh, right bank, north bank, south bank, left bank. The right answer is A, left bank. Um, number eight, what did the African country of Rhodesia become after independence? It became Zimbabwe. Um, number nine, the world's most active volcano. Uh, was it Kilauea in Hawaii? Is it uh, Ojos de Salado? I just want to say it one more time in Argentina. Uh, Mount Etna in Sicily or Mount Pinatubo in Philippines. It's actually the one in Hawaii. I flew over this. And as you fly over it, because of all the updrafts and whatever, it was actually active at the time, sort of sort of active a bit. It was quite red as you flew over it. And the plane will drop. And there were about four of us a crew in this thing. And we were so, the plane drops. A little plane flying over the volcano. It's a sort of touristy thing, but it drops automatically as it goes over the volcano. It's very, very, very scary. Number 10, last one in this round. Which country has achieved the most Olympic bronze medals and the right answer is D, the USA. I don't think I'd have put that. They've got lots and lots of goals, but they've also got lots and lots and lots of bronze medals, 793 in total. Okay, round five. This is one we call Musical Mojis. I'm going to ask you to decipher a song title 
from the emojis as they come up on your screen. There's a mixture for all musical tastes uh, and there are 10 of them. So here they are, emoji number one. Okay, what's this tune? Emoji number two. Ten of these in this round. This is emoji number three. How you doing? Emoji number four. I did say there was a big range of musical taste in this. Emoji number five. I wonder if anybody has got five out of five so far. Possibly. This is emoji number six. Great tune, and I don't mean a word of that. This is emoji number seven. Okay, three more. Moji number eight.
and number nine. I like this round. Uh, this is the last one. Emoji number 10. What's the tune? So, round five, musical emojis, these are the answers. Number one, Black Hole Sun by Soundgarden. I don't, um, I don't need to have the, the name of the artist or artiste from you, but I'm just telling you. Number two, Englishman in New York by Sting. Number three, Call Me Maybe, Carly Rae Jepsen. Number four, Down in the Tube Station at Midnight, Paul Weller and the Jam. Uh, number five, great tune, Teenage Dirtbag by Wheatus. Uh, number six, two became one, which actually did become a number one for the Spice Girls. Uh, number seven, classic from Eurovision, Waterloo, which started everything for ABBA. Number eight, for the younger quiz players, Watermelon Sugar, Harry Styles. Uh, number nine, Billy Ocean with Caribbean Queen. He's now got this splendid silver beard, Billy. Caribbean Queen, number nine. And number 10, Eat, Sleep, Rave, Repeat by Fat Boy Slim. 10 there. I wonder just how many you've got right so far. I'd be amazed. Probably some of you are very, very clever and some of you are not quite so clever. Okay, round number six. Now this is the last round, except we've got one special question at the end. Round six is true or false. Now for this last round, we've got quick fire, true and false questions, 10 of them in all. Here we go. You can see the Great Wall of China from space, true or false. The Channel Tunnel is the longest tunnel in the world. Number three, Mickey Mouse was originally gonna be called Mortimer Mouse. Number four, all dogs are colorblind. True or false? All dogs are colorblind. Number five, goldfish have a three second memory. True or false? Number six, Prince's real name was Prince. Number seven, Sting's real name is Reginald Dwight. Number eight, Jaffa cakes are biscuits, not cakes. True or false? Number nine, the hippo. Hippopotamus has webbed feet. And number 10, water goes down the plug hole in opposite directions in the northern and southern hemispheres. True or false? Okay, let's have a look at the answers. 10 questions, true or false? Number one. You can see the Great Wall of China from space, and I've always thought this was true, but I've never ever been up in space, so I'll probably never know. Actually, it's false. Number two, the Channel Tunnel is the longest tunnel in the world. False. Uh, the longest tunnel is actually the Gotthard Tunnel in Switzerland. Uh, number three, Mickey Mouse was originally gonna be called Mortimer Mouse. Can you imagine? True. Uh, all dogs are colorblind is false. Number five, goldfish have a three second memory. That's actually false. Uh, their memory can last for several months. I don't know who measures goldfish memory, but apparently they've got a good memory. Number six, Prince's real name was Prince, is true. Uh, his full name was actually 
Prince Rogers Nelson. So it's true. Number seven, Sting's real name is Reginald Dwight is false. Uh, his real name is Gordon Sumner, and Reg Dwight, of course, went on to become Elton John. Did rather well. Uh, number eight, Jaffa cakes are biscuits, not cakes. Is false. Uh, in 1991, the High Court ruled that uh, they are cakes, and therefore pay no VAT. Aha! I was thinking, why would they bother with a court case? But they pay no VAT because they're cakes. Um, the hippo has webbed feet, uh, it's true. It's also the animal that kills the most people every year in Africa. Uh, if you get between them and the water hole, they will go straight through you. And number 10, uh, water goes down the plug hole in opposite directions in the Northern and Southern hemisphere. And I remember trying this as an experiment when I was in Australia. And no, it's nonsense, it's false. It makes no difference whatsoever. So this is a bonus round, one final bonus round. Um, let's see if you can tell your, your anus from your rectum or your liver from your gallbladder. Um, I've got an image coming up on the screen. Now, can you put the following parts of the digestive system against each number? I want you to match the right number against the right part of the body. In there somewhere are esophagus, stomach, colon or large intestine, rectum, anus, liver, gallbladder, ileum and pancreas. They're all up there on the screen but I want you to number them, match them to the number 1 to 10. And that's your lot. It's quite fun, actually. I thoroughly enjoyed it from my end, but I was only doing the questions. I hope you did okay, but don't forget it wasn't a great cause. I do hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. All proceeds go to what I think is a really great charity. It makes a huge difference to an awful lot of people right across the UK. And don't forget, please, we did say just a suggestion, three quid for entering. That's not bad, is it? Obviously, if you want to give us more, we'll be delighted. And if you want to give us less, it's okay. Whatever you can afford. Hope you had a nice time. I had a nice time. I was Chris Tarrant. If you didn't enjoy it, I was Chris Evans. Goodbye.